Hi, thanks for joining us today. If this ministry has impacted your life, we want to hear about it. You can send us your story at amen at vnchurch.com. Also, we would love if you would partner with us financially. You can go to vnchurch.com and click the Give Online or text your donation amount to 757-230-2110. To honor copyright laws, we have removed some audio and video elements from this message. Now here's this week's message. Well, good morning. How are you? We are in this series. We're talking about Hello, Holy Spirit. We're talking about the Holy Spirit, and, and uh, that's the third part of the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Most of us have heard about the Holy Spirit before, the Holy Ghost, but just because we are familiar with the term doesn't mean we understand it. Sometimes we get uh, more information, and then we realize, well, I was misinformed. I, I was kind of confused on that. Has that ever happened to you where you thought you knew something and it turns out you were wrong? Well, that happened to me this past week. I was in L.A. I was actually in Anaheim for a National Vineyards Conference. I had some of our staff with us. And we had uh, rented a van. I was the driver. It was one of those rental vans. kind of new, so it had the uh, remote, no key to it, just a remote. And uh, you just open the door up and, you know, you just either carry the remote on you or put it uh, on the dash and then you push a button and the car starts up. And uh, the, day, so w the day after we got there, I didn't notice a bike rack and I accidentally, like, hit it a little bit. I barely touched it. But, you know, those bumpers are made of plastic now. And so, like, makes this huge gouge and I'm thinking, wow, that stinks. You know, I, can't, you know, I use my own insurance because I always decline the insurance. I thought, well... Well, my premiums don't go up, you know. The next day, we're, I'm, I'm the guy transporting our team from the hotel to the church where the conference is, and we're headed out for the evening session, and so we're on our way out of the hotel. I have my little entourage behind me of the people that are going to go in my, the minivan I'm driving. I pull out my key remote, and I, I hit it, you know, twice to you know, make sure it's mine. Because, you know, when you're renting a van, I, I don't, sometimes I'm not, it's hard to find my van. And it, it lights up, the van. I'm thinking, hey, this is my van. And it lights up right when I hit it. I thought, okay. So I go over to get in to open the door. And one of the guys with me goes, hey, I want to go see that damage that, you know, on the bumper. You know, I'm thinking, well, that rubs salt on a wound. That makes me feel, anyways, he goes over there. He goes, oh, it's not that bad. I'm thinking, right. So he gets, he gets in on the other side. We're all getting in, and we notice there's like a baby car seat in there. We don't have a baby with us. I start realizing, I look around, it's not my van. I just got into somebody else's van. I look up, the family who, whose van it is, they're right there looking they're like in shock. <laughs> Evidently, they were right behind me, and they had hit their remote at the same time I did, <laughs> which is why it lit up. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, oh, they, I feel so bad, but they're like, they're so still in shock, you know, they don't know, even know what to say, they didn't even say anything, they just watched all these people get into their car, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> what's going on here? <laughs> so I apologize, they kind of like, well, just get out of my car, you know. <laughs> Here's the thing, <laughs> sometimes we get a little knowledge and we think we know things, right? You know, I thought I knew, hey, that's my car, this thing lit up, and we're talking about Hold the Holy Spirit, because sometimes we think we know it, we got it, okay, yeah, that's God, but there's a lot more as we start to unpack than we realized. So that's why we're taking these six weeks, and we're looking at the Holy Spirit, and we've talked about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We've talked about God empowering us through the Holy Spirit. And today we're going to be talking about going through difficult times, because, you know, when we're through tough times, that's when we really need some help. And God brings help through the Holy Spirit. We're going to look at that today. And talk about that. Because the Holy Spirit, that is, that, that is God's way of, of empowering us, helping us out. Jesus came and he ministered among us 2,000 years ago. 
He died on the cross. The night before he died on the cross, he met with his disciples at the Last Supper, what we call communion. And he had a meeting with them. It's described in John 13 through 17, the Gospel of John. And he has this discourse with them. And, he, and part of what he impacts is he goes, hey, I'm going to leave, but I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. And he talks about that in those chapters. We're going to be looking at some of those verses today. Kind of like if you're a parent, you know, sometimes you might have gone away for the weekend and you tell the kids, hey, we're going to be going away. You're here alone, but here's some instructions for you. You leave it on the, the refrigerator. Here's the phone number for where we can be reached at. And uh, then you give them a couple other instructions like, right, here's where, you know, here's an extra 20 bucks or whatever. Be nice to each other. Don't stay up all night watching video games and drinking Red Bull. But in this case, it's like he says, I'm going to leave somebody here with you. I'm going to send somebody. It's like, oh, and by the way, grandma and grandpa are going to be here. You know, so they're going to, so make sure and don't make it miserable for them and obey what they say. This is what Jesus says. He says, well, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit and I want, he's going to teach you, he's going to empower you and make sure and obey him. This is part of the instructions that Jesus gives us. He goes, I'm, I'm going away. I'm sending you the Holy Spirit. So now with the Holy Spirit coming, there's kind of like our part. We need to do something to, to, to interact with, with the Holy Spirit, include him in our lives. And then the Holy Spirit comes and brings benefits, helps us out. We're going to look at this message today in those two parts, our part and then God's part. First of all, our part, our part, n number one, is, is that God invites you to experience his love. And so Jesus, as I said in these chapters there in John, he's talking about this relationship with God, and he says, I have, I'm going to bring access. God the Father, he, he, Jesus says, I have this special relationship with him, and I'm going to make sure that you have access to God the Father. I want you to have God's love in your life. And, and in, in verse in chapter 17, it's a whole prayer, a prayer first for his disciples, then for all disciples. And at the very end, the very end of the prayer, he summarizes, he says this, I have made known, I've made you known. He's talking about, he says, he's talking about God the Father. He says, I've made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order. Uh, there we go. I'm waiting. Okay. In order that the love you may have for me be in them and that I myself may be in them. So what he's saying is, is that we, we, he goes, I want you to have a relationship with him, not just a relationship where you know God. And that's often in our secular society, that's like the big deal, right? Do you believe in God? And like you win the lottery if you say yes. Yeah, I believe in him. Whoa, okay, well, you're one of us then. And, but Jesus sets a way higher bar than that. Just believing him, and again, in our secular society, that's a big deal, but Jesus says, well, actually, I want you to know God's love. And knowing and just believing God is not the same as experiencing his love. He says, I want you to experience his love. I want you to kind of, the way Jesus had this love relationship between him and the God the Father, because I want you to have that. And so he talks about the Holy Spirit being the access point. Of course, Jesus dying on the cross and us putting our faith in him brings us into right relationship with God. But Jesus also sends the Holy Spirit so that we are empowered. Now, how do we, uh, how do we engage the Holy Spirit in empowerment? Well, it's through obedience. It, it, through obedience. When we obey, in other words, we need to obey uh, the, uh, God when we obey. Our love for God is expressed in obedience. So it's in obedience is, is, uh, is, is the way our relationship is cemented. It's true in, in other relationships, right? I mean, for Sharon and I, we, we wouldn't necessarily, we don't obey each other. We do. <laughs> well, I, well, I tried that. It doesn't work on my end. <laughs> but, but we do try to honor each other's requests. And, and when Sharon needs something from me, when, she, when she's making a request, my default is yes, I want to please her. I wanna, I, that's part of the way I express my love to, for her. And that's, the true, that's true in our relationship with God as well. When God, he, he has requests, he says, this is what I want you to do. These are my commands. We do it because we honor God. We, we, we love him. And they go hand in hand. It makes no sense to say that you love your spouse 
and then you can ignore them. You don't do anything. They, you just ignore them. They're not on your radar. You're not looking for, you know, any way to, to, to help them out, meet their needs or anything like that. It w- th- that would be true of your kids. To say you love your kids, but then you ignore them. Or you say, uh, you know, to a good friend, I love you, and then you ignore them. I mean, this is, this is true in relationships. It's true with our relationship with God. So part of the way we interact with God, we, we, we express our, our, our love to God, is by obeying him. And that's what he says. Jesus says it three times. He says, if you love me, you will obey what I command. Then the next verse Whoever has my commandment, whoever has my commandments and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my father and I too will love him and show myself to him. And then the last verse, uh, uh, Jesus replied, if anyone loves me, he will obey my teachings. My father will love him and will come to him and make our home with him. So he gives this promise. He says, it's important that we have a relationship where we do what God says. Because uh, if, if we just continue to shine, shine somebody on, if somebody were to come up to me, ask for some advice, hey, Andy, what do you think? I give them advice, they, they totally ignore me. Totally shine me on. And then they come up, hey, Andy, do you have some advice? After a while, I'm going to say, why are you even coming to me? I mean, you don't really w- want to s- do anything I say. And certainly, and my advice would not be God's advice, but when we go to God, and God's giving us instruction when we have the still, small voice, when we read God's word, and he says, this is what I want you to do, and we just continually ignore him. He goes, that's a, that's a problem. There's a problem in that relationship. So part of the way we express our love to God is through doing what he says, obeying him. So that's our part. Then God brings his part. Sharon's going to come, and she's going to talk about God's part for us, Okay. Good, thanks. I just first wanted to go down that I was not in his van, okay? I had my own van with our own folks, <laughs> right? It was fun. When the, when the staff that were with him, they, they got with me, they were having lunch, because you're not going to believe what Pastor Andy did. I said, oh, I probably will. <laughs> Anyway, as Andy was teaching that love does express itself uh, in obedience to God's word, and I want to talk about God's part. What God's part is that he uh, promises to give us the Holy Spirit. That's his part. And because that's his part, I'm going to ask us just to stop for a moment and dial back, and I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to come even more. So just close your eyes, and uh, yes, let's invite the Holy Spirit just to come and to bring this truth. Father, your Holy Spirit is welcome here. We need you, Lord God. And this principle that you, that you deposit the Holy Spirit, that is done through you. And so right now, Holy Spirit, I ask that you would come and that you would illuminate, that you would open our minds up to be able to receive this truth that you have to give us. So Father, we quietly and patiently, yes, wait to hear upon Hear what you have to say. We wait upon you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Yes, Lord. Now empower us, Father, to take these scriptures and to see the truth in them and to be able to carry them out, Father, that they wouldn't just hit our head, but they would drop down into our souls, Lord, and that they would be able to empower us to walk out what you tell us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You know, I have um, been walking with the Lord for over 40 years, right? And I can tell you the number one game changer in my relationship with him was when I began to understand who the Holy Spirit was, and I began to recognize him, uh, you know, when I see him, and I learned to follow him. So these are some of the things I want to bring to you today. I want to talk to you about it. So on your outline, I want you to look at this because Jesus says when he's leaving that he's asking the Father to bring us the Comforter, which is Jesus Christ, I mean, which is the Holy Spirit. And so we want to understand what that means. And I've put it five things down for, uh, for 
you to consider when you think about the Holy Spirit. The first one on your outline, the Holy Spirit is another advocate for you, is what the scriptures say. John 14, 16 through and 20, it says, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the spirit of truth. And so I want you to circle that word, another advocate. Okay, this is important. An advocate is a person that supports you, right? It's the person that helps you in a course of action to, to be successful. You know, as a director of special education, one of the things that I did is I was an advocate for students. I would advocate for their needs within the system so that the system can be moved about so that that student could get what they uh, needed, right? And that we would still hold the integrity of the, the, uh, the things that, that needed to take place in the school system. And so I was an advocate. That's what an advocate does. And the second part that we see here is where it uses this word another. And it's not just a little in, inconsequential word. Another means one like the other, right? And so when we look at this, what is being said here is that uh, the Father God is going to send you another like you already have. So if I had a dollar bill and I said, I'm going to give you another dollar bill, right? And you already had one. Uh, it, it implies I'm giving you two now. You're going to have another one. And so there's this whole idea that Jesus Christ is asking the Father to give you one like himself who is an advocate. Now, this is very important, so don't miss this. The first advocate that has been given to you and I is the Son, Jesus Christ. And his purpose was to come here and to reconcile sinful mankind to a holy God. That means everything that I've ever done wrong, everything you've ever done wrong, that Jesus Christ took upon himself and he paid the penalty of giving up his own life and dying on a cross so that you and I would have this way of being forgiven right? That we could be reconciled to the holy God and stand before him. So Jesus is our first uh, advocate. As the scriptures say, those that, that believe in the heart and confess with their mouth, so shall they be saved. And so this is being played out in Jesus Christ, our advocate. And so we need to know that. And if you don't have that truth, if you haven't accepted it for yourself, at the end of my time with you today in sharing, I'm going to give you that opportunity. And that's why Jesus Christ brought you here today, to hear this message that you matter to him and that this is your opportunity to line yourself up with this advocate, okay, so that you can stand before a holy God. Now, the second advocate is this Holy Spirit. He's going to become our advocate now that's being given to us. And the Greek word is parakletos that is used here, okay? And this is uh, a word that is translated, if you read the different versions of the Bible out there, you see it translated in English words that are, <laughs> that are different in different Bibles, right? Like it'll be translated, the Holy Spirit will be translated, the comforter, the helper, the advocate, the counselor, <clears throat> the encourager, the companion, your friend right? Why so many words? Because the English language cannot take the paraclete, right? He, it describes, we don't have it in our English language, it just use one word, so it uses all these words because it means all of that and more, okay? Here's the point I want you to walk away with. The Holy Spirit is here to be with you, to walk alongside you. It's what God has given you, and it's huge. It helps us in our life's journey, the second thing I want to draw your attention to the Holy Spirit, number two, the Holy Spirit is with you forever. The scripture says in John 14, 17, the world cannot see him, which is talking about the Holy Spirit, because it neither sees him or knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. And so what we see happening here is that Jesus has sat down, he's talking to his disciples, and he's saying, you know, I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. And he goes, hey, he's with you now, and he will be in you, right? And like the disciples are like, well, what do you mean, right? What do you mean? And so what I believe is happening here is Jesus is pulling back the covers to expose the Trinity, right? And we talked about that when we opened up this series of talking about, no, hello, Holy Spirit. We talked about the importance of the Trinity. Remember, the Trinity is those three persons, distinct persons, Father the God, right? Father God, and uh, also the Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. 
three distinct entities, but one Godhead. And so now you see Jesus pulling back and he's saying, hey, if you know Jesus, you know the Father. You've seen the Father. If you know Jesus, then you have the Holy Spirit. And so we see the Trinity being displayed here. Now, why is this so very important? Because there's many, many times that you and I, we walk through life and we encounter difficulties and we feel like we are all alone, right? <clears throat> we feel like, oh my gosh, that, that loneliness, like nobody gets it, right? I'm here by myself. Yet the Father wants us to remember that just like the Father has always existed, Father God and created the universe, and that Jesus Christ has come specifically to help you, to reunite you to the Father God, that the Holy Spirit, sure enough, has been here since the beginning of time to make sure that he guides you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He is always here for you, and we need to remember that. The next thing about the Holy Spirit is that he is in you. That little word in, very important. He has taken up residence inside of you and I. We see this first occurring in scripture in the day of Pentecost where Peter stands up, you know, when the Holy Spirit comes in and fills up the disciples, right, with the Holy Spirit and they start speaking in tongues and all these things. And, and so they go out and they start preaching and talking to the people that are wondering what's going on with them. And they start telling them about the good news of Jesus Christ and what he's done for them. And the people are so cut and quickened to the heart that they say, what must we be, you know, what must we do? And here's Peter's response to them in Acts 2, 38 and 39. He says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children, I love that, and for your children and for those who are far off, which is us here today, right? For whom the Lord will call uh, whom the Lord our God will call. And so we see this promise wasn't just for the way back then with the disciples. No, no, it's for us today. We have it. The Father God has intended and given us the Holy Spirit to be taken into us because he knows that we need this and we need to be filled up with it. Look again at Ephesians 5:18. It says, don't get drunk on wine, right? Which will only ruin you. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is to come in on the time that we accept Jesus Christ and totally fills us up at that time. You know, he's totally here with us. But it's our good pleasure to begin to unwrap that. And what does that mean in our lives? Okay? So at the time you pray and ask, you know, Jesus Christ into your heart, the Holy Spirit enters you completely. Okay? But then you have control. You always have control because this is the way God works. He allows you to. So I'm going to use a metaphor here to explain what I'm talking about, the Holy Spirit coming in. It would be like if my life were my house, right? I have the control factor to open the door and to allow Jesus Christ to come in. That's called salvation. And he comes in and he, is man he manifests through the Holy Spirit. So now he lives in the house, right? And so I invite him in. I might say, come sit in my living room because it's more formal, right? And I make sure if I'm going to clean in anywhere, it's going to be there because that's where the guests come in, right? And so I might sit him down there and then I might invite him into my dining room because, you know, hey, we do everything right there. We pray for our meals and stuff like that so he can come there. But I really don't want him maybe to come down into my living room, where we hang out and the TV is going on because you know what, Jesus? Yeah, I might get offended at the type of shows I'm watching these days, right? Or God forbid, if he wants to go into my garage, oh, what a mess it is in there, right? And I might say, oh, it's too messy for you to go. You don't want to go in there. I haven't had time to, to clean it up, right? In reality, I don't really want to clean it, <laughs> right? That's Andy's job. No, decent. <laughs> I don't want to clean it. And so... I keep coordinating off those sections, right? And allowing God in some places, but not in others. Here's the correlation. We do that in our lives. We tell the Holy Spirit where it can move and where it cannot move. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to live like that. I don't want to live like that. I have learned over following the Lord and saying, oh, I want you to be here or here, but don't come here. I'm too messy. I'm I'm unrighteous, I've sinned, I, you know, I'm so screwed up in that area. Don't go there, right? But I have learned, no, 
to yield and to allow the Holy Spirit to move in every part, even the unredeemed parts, because I have learned if I allow him to come in, he brings his light in, and the light of Christ, what that does when the Holy Spirit is able to expose those areas in my life and yours, he's able to bring the peace and the hope and the transformation that we so need and that we cannot do without his help right? And so we need to learn to allow the Holy Spirit to work completely to be fill us up in our whole being. And you have control over that. You get to decide that. That's something that the Holy Spirit wants you to know. If there's an area that you want him in your life, you have control to invite him in there. If, if you don't feel like he's moving enough, it's probably because you've got a wall there. And so you need to just say, uh, whatever it is, show me Holy Spirit, and I'm going to open it up. I'm going to give you the keys to unlock it. I believe that's a word from the Lord today. Now, the, third, or the fourth thing I want you to see about the gift of the Holy Spirit that's been given to us is the Holy Spirit will teach you and remind you of everything that Jesus says. He's going to teach you and remind you of everything that Jesus says. In John 14, 25 and 26, it says, All this I have spoken while still with you, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything that I have said to you. Now, when this scripture was penned, the primary reason for this scripture was given to the, the apostles at the time, right? And it was given to the apostles because Jesus was telling them, hey, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to help you apostles to remember all that I said, to understand what I've said, to put meaning to it. And then in that putting that meaning to it, you know, you'll be able to pen it. And that's where we get the four gospels, right, in the New Testament, is the Holy Spirit is breathing on them to remember these things. That was the primary reason this was written. But the secondary one is just as important. The secondary one is that the Holy Spirit that's deposited in you and I now is also to remind us what Jesus says. That's why Jesus calls the Holy Spirit the Spirit of Truth. Look on your scripture here, John 16, 13. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth, right? So the spirit of truth is where Jesus Christ uh, is now wanting us to move. And we find the spirit of truth, not just with the Holy Spirit in us, but through his word, right? If we, we need to um, elevate his word. It's not just some book, right? And so we need to take it out. We need to know that we need to work with that book with the Holy Spirit, that God is using the Bible to help us to understand how to find and fulfill the purpose that God has for us. You know, I'm working with a young woman, and uh, she is trying to find the power to live and to overcome things in her life. And I said, you know, the best thing that I can do is to point to the Word of God with you. And let's start to read it together, and let's start to talk about it, right? And so we've, we're starting uh, in the uh, New Testament, and she was reading the Gospels, and she read through Matthew, and then she got on to Mark, and, and she goes, wait a minute, Sharon, isn't this the exact same stories, <laughs> right? Why, why do I need to read that? And I looked and I said, because this time when you read it, I want you to ask the Holy Spirit, invite him to come in and to help you, to start to open up your eyes. You see, I've learned the reality of when I invite the Holy Spirit in and I'm reading the word of God, that I begin to understand that the words are not just words and stories on a page. Oh my goodness, no. The depth and the meaning, you begin to see the characters displaying the kingdom of God and the inbreaking, and it's at this this time that you become empowered. You become empowered to see the transformation that God wants to do in your life. You begin to understand the principles that are at play. You begin to understand that now he has equipped you with the ability to go back and to look at your one and only life. And are you spending it the way God has purposed you to do that? The word of God is your power. It's what the Lord calls the sword. And so you and I need to know that we need to work on learning the sword and to use it in our lives. And I tell you, I have learned in my life, if I spend time with the Lord in the morning, <laughs> he uses, you know, especially when I go into a tight situation, he always brings back up a scripture that I've memorized or I've read that morning to help me, right? He does that. And at least you'd be sitting here today and you think, I can't read that often, I'm so busy, or I can't memorize, I'm just not a good memorizer. I want to tell you a little story. My mom, who I admire, she is going to be turning 82 in August, right? And like most 82-year-olds, she's, she's got a pretty good memory, you know. But 
age is catching up with her a little bit here, but I can tell you this, she knows her scripture, okay? I mean, I've watched her. People will come up and they'll be like sharing something with her, you know, a pain or something, and she'll be going, "Mm mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden she'll say something like, Well, you know what God says about this? And then she'll quote a scripture. I mean, not just one little one. She's a whole chapter, right, on what God has to say about that. And I once asked her, go, how can you do that? And she goes, because I learned early on in my life to hide God's word in my heart and to memorize stuff, you know? I know that God, if I put it in there, God is faithful to bring it back out. And that's indeed what he is doing. I tell you what, I want to grow up to be like that. Hide the word of God in your heart. It's very important for us to do. And the word of God is also your discernment. You know, so many of us, we need to know whether I turn to the right or to the left, and it becomes oh so very confusing, doesn't it? It really does, you know, and, and who's telling the truth and who's lying, what, what's going on, and it's also confusing. But when we have the Holy Spirit and we have the word of God inside of us, he is able to help us discern, do I move here? Or do I move here? And if I make the mistake and I move here, you know what? He speaks to me and I move back over here. That's the inner workings of the Holy Spirit. And he works through the word of God to help you to to be transformed in your thinking. But I tell you what, if you don't know and you don't put the word in, then he can't draw it back out. So you need to make that effort to put it in. The fifth thing I want you to know about the Holy Spirit is that he gives us peace. He gives us peace. John 14, 27, it says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Now, when I picked this scripture, I knew that the Holy Spirit didn't say that. Jesus said that. But there's this tight correlation that Jesus himself uses to connect that, uh, that the promise of peace comes right, as we allow the Holy Spirit to move in our lives. And I see that kind of squares up with those scriptures. For example, in Romans 14, 17, it says, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, of peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. And so we see those that uh, allow the Holy Spirit to work in their lives, it produces this tremendous peace. Now, it's Peace, not like the world, because the world's peace is the absence of conflict. The peace that Jesus was talking about is the Hebrew word for shalom, right? And shalom, the whole idea behind shalom is that it is a, uh, that you are flourishing, that you are well in your soul, no matter what's going on in your life. That's the kind of peace that, that God has to give us, that the Holy Spirit, when we invite him in, he helps us to flourish and to have our souls nurtured no matter what we're facing. And I have found this to be true in my life. Over all those years that I have been following him, when I find where I have failed you know, to, to, uh, to meet the expectation of somebody that's in authority over me, or I've been disappointed in a relationship that I'm in, or I've, I've tried something financial and I've had a collapse, right? Or I've had the sadness of delay in a dream, you know, or I've had to have experienced the loss of of children or the loss of a parent. Yes, these things are like hurricanes that blow into your life. And you think you can't stand. I'm going to tell you, they're not just words, that's my life. Yes, Lord. That is an anchor. Jesus Christ is an anchor. And he anchors your soul. He anchors your soul in him. And the Holy Spirit is your anchor. And it keeps you from being drunk and under when the hurricane is blowing in your face. And you think, I can't stand. And Jesus Christ says, no, you will stand because I have deposited the Holy Spirit in your life. So today you might have came and you might think, Sharon, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha you because there's, there's a hurricane going on in my life today. It might be that you've got a difficult marriage. It could be that your heart is so broken over the waywardness of a child. It could be that you're so overwhelmed with, you know, expectations at work or at school. And you're thinking, I can't stand up. Or maybe it's the loss of a dream. You're thinking, it's gone or the difficulty of dealing with things like people dying. 
those things are hard things. Those are like hurricanes that blow into your life. Or maybe you're just here thinking, man, I have to make a decision. Do I turn left or right? And I don't know what to do. Father God has not left us as orphans. He has given us the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is there to bring the peace of Christ and to give you the ability to have that solid place that you can stand. The Lord Jesus Christ loves you and is here today. He's here today for you. You're not alone. Bow your heads with me. I'm going to close this in prayer. Father God, I thank you for your presence. Yes, Lord. This morning you told me that you were the good shepherd, Father. And that you've come to equip your children. You've come to, to separate out what is yours, Lord. And so, Father God, here's your word. And here's the heart of those, Father, that you've asked me to, to speak to today. Come, Lord Jesus. Come more and more. Mm. There's some of you that are far from the Lord. And so I'm going to go right to you. While everybody's head is, is bowed and they're praying, you be praying for these folks because they're trying to make a decision for Christ right now. Listen, God brought you here to hear that you matter. And no matter what's going on in your life, he's there for you. And so your first advocate, your first place to go is to the Son, Jesus Christ. And so I'm going to call out now a prayer and you can pray it with me. It's simple, but it makes all the difference in the world. You just say, Father God, go ahead and say it right where you're at. Father God, I want to get closer to you. I know I've sinned. I know I've fallen short. Jesus, would you forgive me? Thank you for taking my place on that cross. I accept you today as my Lord and my Savior. Father, for those hearts that were praying that prayer, I said you'd seal that prayer in their heart. And I thank you, Lord, that you promised that you wrote their name in the book of life and that they belong to you. Now, Holy Spirit, I felt your presence. You pinged my heart. You wouldn't let me just run over issues. And so, Lord God, I ask that you would take and that you would use uh, this conversation that, that we've had today, Lord, these folks and I, and that you would do this thing that only you can do, which you would manifest yourself in your power and in your might, that you would show us that you were always there for us, that whenever we have that feeling come upon us, Father, of being by ourselves, that you would push us through, Lord, that you would push us through, that we would grab hold, that you are always there. And Father, you say that you put the power inside of us, the Holy Spirit. And I ask, Lord, that you would embolden each person that heard what your Spirit was saying to open the doors. I see many doors that are closed in people's lives. And God says, I will not enter unless you open it for me. And so those very areas that you're having a hard time in, you need to open them this morning. You need to open them. He says, open them, and he will come right in and be with you this morning. Father, I thank you that you're gracious. You're so gentle. <laughs> you're so very loving. And so, Father, as people are daring to open up their hearts, I ask, Lord, that you would come in and do what only you can do, to breathe in the hope that we so need and the transformation. I thank you, Lord. I thank you that you are teaching us to love you with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul, and with every breath of life. You are so worthy. In Jesus' precious name, amen.
Thanks for listening to this week's message. We hope you enjoyed it. Don't hesitate to write us your story at amen at vmchurch.com. And we'll see you next week.